Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Kreitman. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to uh, we're going to do some neon. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and drop a spline object into our scene, and it drops in like that. Let's face front, and let's draw a profile. Let's go ahead and uh, grab the rounded rectangle and drag it out. And it doesn't look like anything's going to happen here. It looks like a regular rectangle, but when you let go of your mouse. Uh, some extra options come up. Now, to your, if you uh, add any of any values at all, if you go to the left, it's going to be more rounded. Uh, values of one are going to make it more more uh, more like an oval. So let's go ahead and keep the values like they are. Go like that. And now any any dra drag it around that we want to do, we can just do via the handles right here. You can make it skinnier or longer. And this is cool. This is just what we want. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the director's view and draw this in a little bit because it's a little thick. And that'll fly. Now uh, let's look to the front again. Let me show you something real quick. Uh, go to the front. Let's click on this. And if you push Command U or Control U for Windows machines, I think it's Control U, um, you have extra options. This ungroups it and this gives you the ability to um, shape it just a little bit more, give it a little bit more yeah, not so uniform shape if you want. Let's go ahead and take this up here, click out and then click back in and you can just you can just drag it around like that, see that? We ain't gonna play with this too much, we're just gonna make this kind of irregular shape. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, that's cool. That's what we want. Let's go ahead and do this. And when you jump, when you do anything with your spline modeler, uh, you'll notice that the that the hot point is off-centered a little bit. Let's go into our motion and then uh, align our object in our hot point. And it puts it like right there in the middle. Okay, cool. Now let's grab another spline object. And you don't have to do this. We're going to start working with text. You have a text tool right here, but I'm, I'm going to do it in the spline modeler to show you that the spline modeler can do text too. Let's go ahead and click your text and then put it in here and then uh, a dialog box comes up. And I've got a I've got a font I want to use. Let's go ahead and do neon. And let's just type in squeaky springs and let's go ahead and make the font size smaller before we push enter let's make it 75 and then push enter and now our and now our uh, text is up there now let's draw this in just like we did on our our uh, other spline object Take this over here, do the same thing, object to hot point, or you can do the hot point to object. Let's make this a little bit bigger to accommodate our text. Or you can shrink your text down. If you can grab a hold of it. The neon makes it a little hard to do that. Bring it down just a little bit. There we go. That'll work. Shift T gives us the ability to move it around. And let's jump back into our spline modeler again. Let's go ahead and make another text object. And this is going to be, let's go ahead and make this 75 right off the bat. Don't push enter because it'll shut your, it'll shut your box. Let's go ahead and make it aerial. Let's go motel in great big letters. Now push enter. Oh, now push enter. And let's do the same thing we did to the other two objects. Bring this down like so. And now let's go ahead and make objects one, two, and three. Let's align them by pushing Command K. And it's going to align them on the Y axis. Kapow. Uh, and see, this is what happens when you don't. Let's do hot point to object. 
Now let's do that again. Get them all. Shift K. Align them to default values, pal. Now let's bring this back just a little bit. Now this is this is kind of important. For the neon effect to work, you need to make sure that your objects and this is going to be better. You can see it better if you look to the left. Let's look at them all like here. And then push zero. And you notice how I have it offset a little bit. This is going to help your neon effect a little bit. It's going to show a little bit of lighting behind it and all the stuff you need. Uh, now our first, let's push one again to get back in here. Our first uh, object is going to, let's, we're going to rename it so that, so that our anything glows light can find it. Uh, we're going to call it squeaky, or no, that's our sign. So we're going to call it sign. And then we're going to call this squeaky, squeaky, and then we're going to call this motel, M-O-T-E-L, and everything has a, everything has a name now. Uh, this is going to make it a lot easier for the Anything Glows Light to work, which is how we're going to make our neon effect happen. Let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit, accommodate the sign some. There we go, T. All right, cool. Everything is cool. Everything is cool. Now let's uh, change our default, um, our default shader to red. Let's jump out, and everything is red. Let's change that by making a new master shader, clicking on it, and we're going to make it not red. We're going to make it blue kind of lightish blue and let's go ahead and drop this on our sign so that we can kind of differentiate things now if you'd have done it the other way if you would made this shader uh, one that you had to drop in here you'd have to drop it in multiple areas where your where your font font is and it would have just taken forever so that that's the quickest way to do it now let's bring our light down so we can show you how this effects gonna work bring that down to 25 now jump over here to your to your lights, grab an anything glows light, drop it there. And let's uh, go by the numbers here. First of all, let's make our range like five will work. And range fall off probably about 13%. Everything's good. Now the item that we're going to make glow is going to be squeaky. Q U E A K Y. And you need to make you need to make sure that your that your uh, case is correct. If you have upper and lower case, however you have your upper and lower case here, you need to make sure that it's the same way in the object that you're wanting to glow, or it's not going to work. That's a uh, kind of a biggie. Uh, we don't need to mess with anything. Uh, light color. Let's do light color since it's the easiest way. Sometimes it's a little hit and miss with the other way. So let's go ahead and make that red. Now let's grab another, let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate our Anything Glows Light. Duplicate. And our, we're going to make our second object that we're going to glow. Motel. And those are going to be the two things. And the reason I duplicated it is because I changed some values up here. Duplicating uh, of something that you have changed the values on and you want the the values to be uniform is the best way to do it. That way you don't have to jump through here and and retype in values and you know certain range fall offs and, and little things like that really make a difference. Now here we go. Let's go ahead and zoom in on here, zero, and let's watch this happen. Cool, right? Now you notice how uh, there's a little bit how there's a little bit of a glow around here. You can add to that effect if you want to by going into your effects and tweaking the aura a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and do the distance on here. Auto update to see what we got. Bring the intensity up. Hmm. Is it doing it? Let's see. No, it doesn't seem to be. Now, uh, we can go ahead and go in here, and let's go ahead and make our glow happen a little more. Let's go ahead and make our glow, pal, red. 
There we go. And now you have a neon effect that is uh, nice and cool. Yikes. Oh, yeah, that's right. We didn't have the glow in there. That's why it didn't do it. Uh, yeah, let's jump back in here again. Duh, I knew that. Enable. Yeah, there we go. Bring the intensity down a little bit. Let's auto update, check it out. Make sure distance attenuation's on there. There we go. Cool. There, that's cool. And let's see, 2419, that's what we're going to have there. Let's do the same thing there. 24 distance attenuation and 19. So that's pretty much your uh, that's pretty much your neon effect. It uh, it's going to be good for dark alleys and bar scenes. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with it, uh, and you don't have to really do anything special except for add anything glows lights in there. And that's just uh, one of the little things that Carrera does. So anyway, uh, that's it for this time. I'm Kreitman. And I'll talk to you again later.